Come on in. This week on Always On, we rock out with the MacBook Pro in a pretty tough torture test. And we take the LG Optimus G Pro out on a road test. Plus, the future of technology that can keep track of all your vital stats. Oh, there's spit all over me. Always On is on. Oh, nasty. Welcome to Always On, I'm Molly Woods. And I'm Jeff Kanata. And this is the show where we take a look at the tech that's part of your life. And your future. We have an amazing show for you this week featuring the MacBook Pro with Retina Display. I love that Retina Display on the MacBook Pro, it's so beautiful. So pretty, but is it tough? Tough? Yeah. We took it out into the field to see just how droppable this laptop. You're smashing that beautiful display, please tell me you're not smashing it. All I'm saying is that we're dropping it. Let's have a look. It is time to test the toughness of the MacBook Pro 13 inch with Retina display. We went looking for a location with a lot of different options and we landed here at American Soil and Stone where we're going to scratch, drop, and dunk our poor little MacBook. Let's get to it. Now, one thing I actually consider a weakness of the MacBook Pro is its aluminum body. It's already a little scuffed up just from sitting on the rock earlier, so we decided to take the scratch test concept and kick it up a notch. All right, let's just come on in. Oh, it's in there. Now we're gonna shake it up. <gasps> that was awesome. So I'm betting that it's a little bit scratched up. Uh, certainly dusty. Yeah, we have some scratching. We have a lot of dirt. I gotta say, this is not nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Turns out, a little bit tougher than I thought, at least in the scratch department. Oh, I'll be careful. I don't want to smush him. Well, so now the thing about our MacBook Pro is that it's really dirty. So I think it's time for it to get a little shower while it's open. Oh, that's terrible. That's just awful. It's like you're on a photo shoot and like a rogue wave comes and it just gets splashed. Not for much longer than that though. Let's rescue here. All right, our screen definitely turned off. I just wanted to wash the dirt off. All right, let's see. I mean, it's off. So I think what we're gonna do here, I did the worst thing imaginable, which was press the power button. Oh, oh, it restarted. The thing that usually goes first is the trackpad. That seems to be the case here. Oh no, the trackpad is on. I'm logged in. This thing is turning out to be a lot tougher than I thought. It's totally functioning after its little shower. Time to keep going. So arguably right now, we still have a perfectly functional MacBook Pro and I am as surprised as you, but it's time for the drop test. All right, three, two, one, walk in. Oh, I guess it doesn't skid at all. It sounded really dull, oh, we have dentage. I definitely have one good dent right here. Let's see if I can't skid it just a little bit. Three, two, one. God, okay, we have some scratching. A Couple more dents. Nothing too serious, but I think we should find out how our retina display can handle a drop if it's, you know, open. Three, two, one, oh! The hinge feels a little tight, but the Screen is okay. I don't really see much more dents. The hinge is just a little bit of, got a little bit of a hiccup, but you know, that's no big deal. 
All right, other than our little scratches and day, it kind of looks like a bear got it. But other than that, it's, it seems fine. I'm just saying it's a, a laptop that's meant to go on the road. It's all totally possible. <sighs> Listen, I don't like this. I don't like that we're doing it. I voted against it. It costs a lot of money. You should know if it's worth it. But there's more to come. There is. But before that, we took the LG Optimus G Pro out on a road okay. test, gave it to right, several users to see if it fits into their life and their pockets. Check it out. Time for our road test of the LG Optimus G Pro. I personally am totally in love with this phone. Have any of you heard of a phablet, or just that silly name? Yep. No, uh -uh. no, no. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So what we're gonna do today is each of you will take one phone out and look for specifically design, the features, and the kind of usability of the phone, and then report back to me, okay? Yep. All right, here's your LG Optimus Pro. For you, for you, for you. I feel like Santa right now. Hey, I'm Peter Brown. I'm an editor at GameSpot. I'm a gamer by day, techie by night, and I really like playing around with mobile devices. Hey, I'm Summer Huff, and I'm the beer rep here in San Francisco. And my favorite thing to do is hop on the back of my boyfriend's motorcycle and jump across the Golden Gate Bridge. Hello, my name is Alex Brown. I'm a student filmmaker. And I love shooting on my tablet, device, or my phone, or whatever I can really get my hands on. I think the phablet form factor for the device is probably a strength for gaming because I think you can obviously see things a lot more clearly and the dimensions really help. It doesn't feel like you have to really like bury the device too deep in your hands to get a good grip on it. I can hold it kind of gingerly um, so that way I can you know, see more of the screen and I'm not worried about dropping it. I really like the design, the smooth edges. It's big but it's nice and thin. Tough, feels like bold, you know? Put it in my pocket. Doesn't even feel like I have my phone in my pocket simply awkward as far as talking on the phone. Maybe it's because I'm a woman and my hands are smaller and my fingers. Something that I like to do all the time when I'm talking on the phone with people is being able to do stuff with my other hand. But I feel like with this, I'd kind of have to, I don't know. It just, it, it wasn't working for me and it just didn't feel normal or right. Vinero, ciao, ciao bello. So how many cases of Peroni do you think that you go through a week or a month here? Two, I would say about a couple of kegs a week. I love that you just said that. Yourself. Using this phone with my retailer is not very easy. It's not user friendly and I was having a hard time taking notes with him and I couldn't figure out how I would open up a presentation to show him. Um, also, I couldn't figure out how to open up an email to show him numbers of how my business is and how it's healthy and I couldn't figure out how to take notes on it. The keyboard is nice and large. I have big fingers. I don't have a problem hitting the keys and hitting double keys. Uh, I can see myself leaving my tablet at home and just taking this to class and using this, taking notes and stuff. I can't see really any downsides to the phone. It seems pretty fast. It's a nice size. Yeah, it's definitely a good crossover. It's weird. Uh, I was just trying to play a game and the screen got dark and so when I went to the settings menu to try to up the brightness, uh, I got a message saying unable to brighten more due to temperature increase, which is really strange, but I guess it was playing a 3D game and the processor got a little too warm, but I was only playing the game for 30 seconds, a minute before that happened. So that's kind of a downside. It doesn't seem like they've got a good uh, control on the heat management, fortunately. Wow. The camera is really good. I can catch some B-roll shots with this. It's pretty good. It's definitely 1080p. It's really clear. The clarity is really nice. It's not grainy at all. It doesn't look like I'm shooting with a cell phone. It looks really good. Only thing it lacks is I can't rack focus, but it's a camera on the phone, so it's really nice. It's a great camera. I could definitely probably shoot with this, shoot a film with this. One of the things that struck me as odd is this button right here. It sort of brings up an odd memo overlay, and so when I was trying to just do something simple, I found myself inadvertently pressing this and then drawing on the screen and having to back out. It's kind of got in the way of productivity. I'm trying to find actually where the camera function is, and I can't actually seem to find it, which is very frustrating. Oh, there's a camera. Here I am, silly Sally. Snap, okay, cool. That actually looks like it's really good quality. The detail is actually really beautiful. I'm impressed with that. Having a phone that takes really beautiful photos is very important to me. 
All right, you guys spent a little while with the phones, testing things out. Let's go, let's go kind of down the line. What are, what are your first impressions after using it? I loved it. I love the screen. I love the bigger screen. I really want to get one now. Really? Yeah, really motivated to upgrade. Okay, so we've sold one LG Optimus G Pro so far. <laughs> let's move on to Summer. What did you think? I was actually extremely frustrated with the phone. I couldn't figure out a notepad. I couldn't find the camera forever. The operating system is very different for me. So yeah, Okay. I, would, I wouldn't buy it. All right, cool. And you're the rubber now because we've got a tie verdict here. Yeah, and I had kind of mixed feelings about the device. I like that it's really light. I think the size is pretty good. The build quality is pretty sturdy. I like that you can take the back off too to replace the battery if you want or add memory. From a gaming standpoint, not strong enough. Right. But as a phone, it's a good phone. So. I think I know what you're going to say, but yeah. would you buy it? Yeah, I would buy it. I'm going to be waiting for this to come out. All right. I think I know. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> what about you? Uh, unfortunately, no. Oh. It doesn't interest me. OK. So two no's and a yes. I guess that's kind of a failing grade for our LG Optimus G Pro. Time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, we're looking at the future of your health on your smartphone. And more tough stuff on that MacBook Pro. I think there may be a forklift involved. It's going to get ugly. Oh, boy. Welcome back, everyone. It is time for Future Tech this week. And this one's all about health, that idea of the quantified self. That's right, tracking everything down to the heartbeat, literally, plus a little genetic testing thrown in, too. Ooh. Why not? So here I have my 23andMe genetic testing kit, and I am going to take the plunge on camera and uh, just, like, find out all about me. I'm such a girl, I don't even know how to spit. Ah, oh, nasty. I guess, I love that though, I mean really, like this is what it takes to get a full genetic profile? Not so bad. So all I do is mail off that little box of spit and wait for a full report on my genetic history, ancestry, and potential diseases. That would have been unthinkable just a decade ago, and it's just one example of how your health is getting more personalized every day. Whether it's a wristband that tracks your calories. Uh, it's got five LEDs on it, so if you tap it, it actually tells you your progress against your goal. But what's also important about it is it, that it uses Bluetooth 4.0, so it wirelessly syncs in the background to smartphones. A toothbrush, an app that measures your brushing habits, or even a fork that makes you eat more slowly. The demo fork that we have here has been pre-programmed on a 10 second interval. Uh, and it basically means that if I'm putting food in my mouth under 10 seconds, it will vibrate. Too you know? soon, too soon. The tech is enabling a trend that some call the quantified self. The idea that you can gather data about your health, your habits, and your history. The benefits can be far reaching. With more accurate, aggregated data, doctors could provide better care, even possibly preventing more serious diseases like cancer and diabetes. I visited Paris-based Withings, where the company's internet-enabled scale lets you keep track of your weight, share the information with your phone, and create a database of your behavior. So you see uh, now my weight on this scale, and in some seconds, I will receive a push on, on my uh, iPhone, okay. which will indicate this, uh, this measurement. This scale can work both in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Okay. So this is uh, the last measurement I made, 75 uh, dot something kilogram. And so it will be uh, added to, 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 my, to my curve. Oh, wow. They've also built a phone app that connects to a blood pressure cuff. You just uh, connect it uh, on, uh, on the iPhone. Oh, that's cool. And it starts uh, automatically the application. Mm -hmm. And then you just press uh, start button and it will start the, the measurement. That's awesome. It's pretty but high. Probably because you are not uh, sitting, sitting and somewhere and uh, like because you are. And so it's not just the monitoring, it's the fact that once you have all of the data in one place, you can see patterns yes. and you can, yes. yeah. And, and you can share with your, you can share it with your, your doctor. Right. Now we've seen plenty of heart rate monitors, but here's an app that detects your heart rate using your phone's camera. This one comes from Azumio. Here's how it works. When the heart beats, blood is pumped into your face, which causes it to change color. The camera can pick up this information and actually determine your pulse. You just hold it in your hand like this distance. Okay. 
center your face and just mm -hmm. tap the center of the screen. Now this should take around 15 seconds to, to get a measurement. Well, oh, mine went up to 94 when I first got here. I was like, it's you. Yeah, maybe. Or the flu. After going through a few of these technologies, I realized I might need to watch my blood pressure and maybe even my heart rate. Then, of course, there's the genetic testing I did with 23andMe, which could tell me if I'm at risk for things like diabetes or even cancer. There can be downsides to knowing all about your health, but hey, at least you know. I think there is nothing but upside to this trend. Monitoring your health from your phone just makes you smarter. I agree. I love the idea of tech making my organic life better. I totally agree. But back to torture testing. <laughs> <laughs> we cover we cover the gamut on this show. That's right. Let's so much for healthy stuff. Let's break things. Yeah, let's find out how things are going with that MacBook Pro. Now, most of the time we try to keep these tests within the realm of possibility. It's time to veer from that just a tiny bit, although I think this could happen. Our buddy Big John here is going to pick up this pallet of bricks with his forklift and then accidentally set it on top of this one. Come on in. There we go. Oh! I'm not even gonna lie, I heard some really terrible noises come out of that just now, because I think the forklift also got the computer. Okay, let's take it away. I changed my mind. I don't want those bricks after all. God, I'm almost afraid to look. I am not seeing any obvious signs of damage right off the bat. The screen is not damaged any more than it was. The case is not damaged any more than it was. I mean, granted, it was only like a pallet of half full of bricks or whatever, considering that even that couldn't do it. I think we gotta go bolder. Okay, Big John, I need a boulder. Help me out. <laughs> this is not okay. <gasps> Let's just let that sit for a minute. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh God. Well now that can't be good. I can't even rock that. Okay, come and get it. <laughs> oh my God. This is some like gratuitous, oh geez, oh no. Oh God. Okay, we definitely messed up the palette. All right, let's see. I have some decent dentage here for sure. That was not nice. Okay, you can definitely see denting. The screen does not lay flush like it used to at all. Let's see if the screen's still intact, though. Oh, oh, the hinge doesn't want to open at all. Oh, we have cracked the retina display. So you have a little bit of spiderweb pattern here. This is kind of where the impact zone was. But I gotta say, nowhere near the shattering that I might expect. If this thing still comes on after drying out, I'm gonna call that usable. This thing is tough. So we're back in the office and we've had our MacBook Pro in a bag of rice for 24 hours. A lot of rice, it's been laying flat. So we're gonna take it out, see if it comes on. Shake out some of the rice. Just to give it the best chance of survival, plug it in. Let's see. I'm just gonna keep holding this power button because I'm keeping hope alive. I don't have any green light on my power cord and I don't have any activity on the screen. I don't know if it was the water or the boulder, but I'm sorry to say I think our MacBook Pro is dead. <gasps> Wait, just when we thought it was dead, it came back on. Not like on, on, but it just needed a little while on the juice to get a little bit of battery life back in it. 
it's not okay. The screen is definitely in a lot of trouble. So now, you saw us do a lot of bad things to this MacBook Pro, and honestly, I bet you could replace this display and you would have a functioning laptop. This guy is unquestionably construction grade. Ah, uh, I love torturing technology on this show, and even I had a hard time watching that beautiful screen. Yeah, we put that torture test off for a while. In the meantime, let's read some of your mail. Now, before we get to your actual mail, I have exciting news to announce the return of the Always On Torture Test sweepstakes. Yes, That's it's right. back. It is back. We are out to improve our karma and find better homes for the devices that we torture by giving them to you, dear audience. So go to our blog, cnet.com slash always on to find out how you can win. And the first thing we're gonna give away is the MacBook Pro that we've been torturing this whole episode. That's right. Yeah, so hopefully you can be kind. <laughs> yes, be kind. nurse it back to health perhaps. Yeah, well, you know, we have gotten pictures and video from people who have taken some of the gadgets that we have broken, gotten them in the sweepstakes, fixed them, and are using them now. That's so cool. So hopefully that'll continue to happen. All right, moving on to the mail. It's been a while since we had like a really good torture test suggestion. This one really made me laugh. Rodrigo writes, I have a torture test idea. You could put a phone or a seven inch tablet in a toaster. I know it's not something that may happen very often, but it would be interesting to see if this gadgets can survive. Really like the show. Sorry if there are any writing mistakes. I think sounds pretty much barely any. So sounds like uh, somebody who's put something in the toaster that he wasn't supposed to put in the toaster. He's like, I know it doesn't happen a lot, but you know, it could happen yes, to somebody. It could happen to someone. It's if a possibility. You just, if you just were curious about that and you just wanted to know what would happen. I like that idea. I know, from Lima, Peru, by the way. Very I cool. We need a map. Uh, I like this email also. It says, Molly, could you torture a Nexus 4? I may be getting one and would like to see if I need a case. Do they even make cases for it? I've never seen one. Also, I was in an earthquake. That's called burying the lead. That is burying the lead. <laughs> also, I was in an earthquake this one time. <laughs> yeah. Also, I was in an earthquake and my two TVs totally survived. But it was a very, very, very mild earthquake. <laughs> awesome show, can't wait for the next episode. It was more like more like a truck drove by, like a truck drove <laughs> yeah, by. Yeah. And the TVs were totally fine because they didn't move These at all. These TVs are amazing for their ability to withstand very, very, very mild earthquakes. <laughs> I do want you guys to know that we are going to be torture testing TVs in season four and we'll be simulating less than very, very, very mild earthquakes. Can I throw uh, game controllers at them? Also that. Yeah, that's what so I and then we can test game controllers at the same time. So stay tuned for that. We, that's going to be kind of our most dramatic torture testing to date. But I'm just saying, a lot of you have emailed and said that you have problems with, for example, hanging them on the wall without dropping them onto the oh, floor. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Could get a Drop tests for TVs. Get ready for that. Yeah, if you have suggestions for TVs or other devices or anything that you would like to convey to us, please email us at alwayson at cnet.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. That's a wrap for season three, everybody, but we have a lot of good stuff coming in season four, like taking some tech underwater to prepare you for your summer vacation. I'm excited for that. And in the meantime, you're gonna get a great episode next week. It's the best of always on. That's right, and the week after that, the one you've all been waiting for, the bloopers. That's my favorite episode of the year. Yeah, it turns out we're human. <laughs> <laughs> I just like looking at Molly make some mistakes for once. Ever. <laughs> all right, stay tuned, everyone, and thank you for watching Always See On. See you next season. Do not eat, drink, smoke, or chew gum for 30 minutes before giving your saliva sample. Unfortunately, I have not done any of those things within the last 30 minutes, so apparently I have to spit now. Could everyone just, could all you crew guys just turn around? Could you just? <laughs> Ew. Mm. <laughs> all right. You just stay back there. <laughs>